بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ٹیچرس آئی ایم راشد سلیم ود لیکچر نمبر ایٹین لیکچر نمبر ایٹین از ریئلی ویری انٹرسٹنگ بیکاز اٹ از اباؤٹ ریڈنگ ریڈلز اینڈ جوکس نا وین ایور وی آر لرننگ اے فارن لینگویج اور اے سیکنڈ لینگویج اٹ از امپارٹنٹ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ it is important to listen and be able to speak in that language but understanding jokes understanding what is funny in a language is not easy uh, but it is really very important for learning a language if we can understand humor in a language it means that we are quite well versed in it it's easy to listen to the news and uh, you will understand it because usually uh, the news has familiar vocabulary and we already have some background information about it uh, if it is a continuing news that is going on for for few days but what about jokes understanding jokes actually uh, is important because if you understand language only then you can really appreciate why it is funny and how it is funny uh, in fact the most difficult to understand a language the most difficult kind of genre is uh, riddles and jokes and at the same time it is really very interesting to share jokes and to uh, look at riddles and i think as uh, good teachers probably sometimes you use riddles in your classes uh, riddles ko aap urdu mein paheli keh sakte hain so it's something um, a question a brain teaser that makes your students think and uh, normally you don't have the right answer uh, for these riddles instead you have uh, an answer which is funny it looks at the humorous aspect of things so lecture 18 is really unique in a way because uh, we haven't done anything like this before and uh, i'm sure that you would like this lecture very much because it includes a lot of jokes in it and it has also food for thought that means it has a uh, lot of riddles in it that will make you think and some of them will actually make you smile as well so um, just buckle up and fasten your seat belts because it's going to be a bumpy flight okay but uh, first we are going to have the review of lecture number 17 in the previous lecture we learned how to identify types of questions and if you can recall there are four types of questions that we discussed there are yes no questions there are wh questions embedded questions and tag questions uh we actually also looked at uh two different kinds of yes no questions we learned that there are positive yes no questions and there are negative yes no questions we also learned uh, that there are two kinds of tag questions we have different polarity tag questions and same polarity tag questions uh let's look at yes no questions for a little while in yes no questions uh when we ask a question in a positive form like are you coming we do not expect any particular answer we do not assume anything but when we start the question with a negative form like aren't you coming uh we have some underlying expectations or assumptions and we learned that uh using the negative form of yes no questions 
uh, can have various underlying functions and as students it is important to identify those functions. Okay, we also learned how to form appropriate questions and for that we learned various question words and in particular we looked at two special question words uh, that is who and what. Uh, and if you can recall these were special question words because uh, we needed a different form when we were seeking information about a person as a subject and about a person as an object of a sentence. Similarly, we use uh, what uh, differently if we are seeking information about things as a subject and about things as an object of a sentence. Uh, I hope you can follow that. Now we move on. Uh, okay, uh, in the last lecture we also learned how to use appropriate intonation patterns. Uh, this is really important and we should learn intonation for not merely for questions uh, but in fact uh, in order to improve our speaking skills, in order to be uh, really clear, uh, we need to learn these intonation patterns. And in future, we will talk about them again sometimes, whenever, uh, when we, whenever we can afford. Hey, who are you? I am funny. Funny? You don't look funny. No, my name is funny. What kind of uh, name is that? It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is funny. I think so. But people don't have such names. Why are you called funny? Why? Well, I was... When I was a little kid, I used to tell jokes and people called me funny. Ah, okay, I understand. Now I got it. Uh, may I ask you a few questions? Yes, sure, go ahead. Okay, so uh, your name is funny, is it so? Yes. Do you have any doubts? No, 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 I, I don't have any doubts. Uh, uh, where are you from? I'm from Texas, USA. Oh, okay, all right. I don't know where it is. Uh, and uh, what, what do you do? What do you do for a living? Can't you see I am still young? I am still a student? Ah, okay, okay. You are a student. So, uh, what kind of student are you? I mean, what subjects are you studying? I'm studying maths. Oh, maths. So, you must be pretty good in maths. Yes, I am. They call me smart and funny. Oh, good. Very good. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm an English teacher, but I would like to ask you a few questions uh, to check your arithmetic skills, uh, if you can count well. Are you good at counting? Yes, sure I am. Okay. Uh, now, if I give you two rabbits and two rabbits and another two rabbits, how many rabbits have you got? Seven. No, listen carefully again. If I give you two rabbits and two rabbits and another two rabbits, how many rabbits have you got? Seven. Ah, uh, let's try it another way. If I give you two bottles of Pepsi, two more bottles of Pepsi, 
and another two pe uh, bottles of Pepsi. How many bottles of Pepsi have you got? Six. Good, good. Now I give you, uh, now I give you two rabbits, and two rabbits, and another two rabbits. How many rabbits have you got? Seven. How on earth do you work out that three lots of two rabbits is seven? How on earth do you work that out? I've already got one rabbit at home. <laughs> okay, so uh, you see, maybe you got the joke or not, but it was uh, just one joke and through this joke, we also reviewed some question forms that we had learnt in lecture number 17. Uh, well, uh, we are teachers, we are not performers, and it's difficult for us to do such gimmicks, but uh, as teachers, sometimes it is important in order to engage our students, in order to involve their attention. We have to do a little drama in the class sometimes, so uh, maybe uh, in this lecture, you will learn some techniques for teaching as well as uh, learning English in a fun way. Okay, uh, the objectives of lecture number 18 are that after completing this lecture, you should be able to comprehend riddles, you should be able to understand riddles, you should be able to read funny texts, and you should be able to use puns and idioms. जी ये लास्ट पॉइंट से दोबारा स्टार्ट करेंगे एंड यू शुड बी एबल टू यूज पंस एंड इडियम्स इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड जोक्स एंड फनी टेक्स्ट्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट आर यू रेडी ओके सो हियर आर सम रेडल्स फॉर यू आर यू रेडी ओके फर्स्ट वन कैन यू थिंक ऑफ अ वर्ड दैट चेंजेस बोथ नंबर and gender when you add the letter S. Yeah, it, it might take some time before you can think of it. You have learned about number and gender. Number is singular and plural. Gender is uh, masculine and feminine. So can you think of a word that changes both number and gender when you add the letter S. Normally when you add the letter S to a word, it only changes the number. It doesn't change the gender. So can you think of a word that changes both number and gender when you add the letter S? So do you give up? Okay, here is the answer. Uh, when you change princes, when you add an S to it, it becomes princess, right? So uh, it changes the number from plural to singular and it changes the gender from uh, prince to princess. Okay, so uh, now you can imagine that uh, while captivating interest, while creating interest, you can also teach a lot of concepts through it. As, a, as an English teacher, uh, you see it has the value of subject uh, teaching as well. Okay, here's another one. Can a kangaroo jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower? Those of you who don't know, Saudi Park Tower is uh, one of the tallest buildings in Blue Area, Islamabad. So it is one of the tall buildings uh, in blue area. So my question again is, can a kangaroo jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower? Yeah, it's not easy to answer. Maybe some of you uh, simply say, no, a kangaroo cannot jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower. But if you answer it this way, you are wrong. So what's the right answer? Here it is. Yes, a kangaroo can jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower because Saudi Park Tower cannot jump. 
Okay, you got the answer. Okay, and uh, now uh, after doing this riddle with your class, uh, you can teach them some grammar points here. I have actually chosen this riddle in order to emphasize its academic value, its value for its instructional value. So, uh, wha what do we learn from this riddle? Can a kangaroo jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower? You should look at jump and higher than. Higher than is a comparative form of adjective. So you two compare two things. Uh, but you know that when you compare two things, they should have some similarities. Here we are comparing a kangaroo with Saudi Park Tower. A kangaroo is an animal which can jump, whereas the Saudi Park Tower is a building which cannot jump. Uh, so we should not use the form higher than. Instead, uh, probably what question we want to ask is, can a kangaroo jump over the Saudi Park Tower? Can a kangaroo jump over the Saudi Park Tower? Probably that would have been uh, the right question. Because this question is incorrectly formed, grammatically incorrect, therefore the answer is surprising. Uh, so I repeat, can a kangaroo jump higher than the Saudi Park Tower? Yes, because Saudi Park Tower cannot jump. Uh, I have used this riddle in order to teach uh, comparative forms of degrees and in order to emphasize the point that we use the comparative uh, forms of adjectives when uh, we compare two things uh, of similar abilities not an animal with a building. Uh, we can compare a person with a person, a car with a car, and so on. Okay, let's move on to the next riddle. Maybe some of you are already thinking of its answer. Why can't a leopard hide? Well, uh, this one actually doesn't give you uh, the option to say uh, that a le leopard can easily hide because it says why can't a leopard hide. Uh, so we are already sure that a leopard cannot hide. You are only to find out the reason why, why it is so. The answer is because it is spotted. I hope you uh, got why it is funny and I hope you understand what it means. Uh, the answer lies in the word spot. Spot has two meanings. One is, uh, one meaning of spot is uh, like I have spots on my skin here. I have spots on my skin. Uh, this is one meaning of spot. Another meaning of spot is to find out. So it is spotted also means uh, because it is found out. So the trick here is in this answer when I, when I say because it is spotted, uh, a leopard cannot hide because it is always found out. So something which is found out uh, cannot hide. Okay, is it funny? Uh, all right, so uh, you find it really interesting, I'm sure. Let's move on and look at few more riddles. And this time we are going to look at riddles with puns. Uh, we have just looked at a riddle uh, that leopards are spotted. And we learnt that the word spot has two meanings. One meaning of spot is like this spot on my skin. Another meaning of spot is uh, to find out. So spot is a noun as well as a verb. As a noun, it is name of a thing. As a verb, it is a name of an action. To find out would be a synonym for it. Uh, a pun is a device when we use a word in such a way that uh, more than one meaning is plausible, more than one meaning is possible. Uh, both meanings are valid and one of them is funny because apparently we 
uh, overlocate. So pun is a literary device. It is a device when we use a word in such a way, in such a context, that it has more than one meanings, and one of the meanings might be uh, uh, might be funny. Okay, now we are going to look look at more riddles uh, that have puns in it. And uh, once you have learned some riddles with the puns, uh, you should be able to uh, make such riddles yourself. Okay, so the first riddle is, what has a neck but no head and wears a cap? What has a neck but no head and wears a cap? You might wonder where he wears a cap. Uh, if he doesn't have a head. Well, he has a neck. So what's the answer? You give up? Okay, let's uh, look at the answer. It's a bottle. Uh, a bottle has a neck, you know. Uh, in fact, bottle neck is an e idiom in English as well. Uh, for example, we say that there shouldn't be any bottlenecks on, in the road. So bottleneck is a place in the road where the traffic gets stuck because uh, the road gets narrow. Okay? Uh, and you know what neck of the bottle means. Uh, so this riddle is interesting because the word neck has two meanings. One neck is uh, a part of a body. Uh, body of a person and the second uh, meaning of neck is a uh, part of the bottle which looks like uh, the neck therefore it is called a neck. Uh, a bottle does not have a head but it wears a cap. A cap is uh, its lid, its cover. Um, so it has a cap, it has a neck uh, but it doesn't have a head. Okay, so you have similar riddles on this page and I want you to look at the next one and uh, maybe it will be easier for you to guess it this time. What has an eye but can't see? What has an eye but can't see? Now think of things in English that have an eye and this uh, use of eye could be idiomatic it could be a pun. Here is the answer. A needle. A needle has an eye in it. Um, you know a needle has a point on one, uh, one side to stitch and on the other side it has a hole which looks like an eye and therefore it is called an eye. An eye of a needle. Okay, so you learnt some expressions through r these riddles. You know that a neck of the bottle and you learnt an eye of a needle. Right? A needle cannot see but it has got an eye. Okay, what has two hands and a face but no arms and legs? What has two hands and a face but no arms and legs? Okay, you gave up again? I, I, I would like you to think about it a little. Take some time, think. Can't think? All right, here is the answer. It's a clock. You know, a clock has two hands, a small hand and a big hand. A small hand that gives us hours and a uh, big hand that gives us minutes. Uh, so a clock has two hands and a face. A clock has a face because it is circular and it looks like a face and in English you call it the face of the clock. Okay, um, So it is a clock. Of course a clock does not have arms and legs. Maybe a timepiece has legs some timepieces 
they because you put them on the table so they might have legs uh, and some of them might even have uh, arms but the clock the wall clock doesn't have arms and legs okay uh, let's move on to the next riddle what can run but never walks has a mouth but never talks has a bed but never sleeps like the previous riddles this one is also an object it's a thing okay here is the answer a river a river runs but it doesn't walk a river has a mouth but it does not talk and a river has bed the river bed means the bottom of the river and mouth of the river is uh, from where the river starts that's the mouth and uh, uh, the bottom of the river is called the river bed um, so through this riddle you can learn some English expressions bed of sea bed of roses uh, bed of river all these have beds okay the next one is easy uh, if you keep on thinking on the same lines I hope you will be able to meet the challenge uh, what has a head and a tail but no body what has a head and a tail but no body oh very good I can hear one of you saying a coin that's the right answer a coin a coin has a head and it has a tail you know when you toss a coin uh, you ask head or tail right uh, so if you talk about a Pakistani coin uh, maybe the figurehead of Qaeda Azam is called a head and uh, on the other side you have uh, the amount of uh, the coin printed that is called the tail so a coin has a head and a tail but it has no body okay good you are good now let's move on to the next riddle what has ears but can't hear okay think of things that have ears it's a corn corn has ears right okay the next riddle is what has a tongue cannot walk but gets around a lot what could it be it is a shoe now you might be wondering how come a shoe has a tongue yes it has a tongue inside it you got it it looks like a tongue okay so it's a little flap inside your boot when you um, it's it's a little flap that is hanging loose like uh, like your tongue and it is uh, between the shoelaces and uh, your uh, your feet got it that's called the tongue the tongue of a shoe okay so you learned some uh, expressions here uh, neck of a bottle eye of a needle face of a clock or hands of a clock bed of the river mouth river mouth and a river runs uh, head and tail of a coin ear of corn and a tongue of a shoe okay so with these riddles and uh, you have puns and you also have idiomatic use of English okay now uh, f in order to teach vocabulary spelling punctuation uh, we also have some word riddles and for English teachers this will be interesting uh, to use such word riddles in your own lang uh, language classes uh, but here you can we can we are going to use them in order to learn language okay so these are easy I want you to answer them this time first one is I know a word of letters three add two and fewer there will be what is the word so it's a word that has three letters in it and if you add two letters to it there will be fewer 
what is the word the right answer is few when you add two letters to this f e w e r when you add two letters to it it will become fewer got it all right thank you okay we'll move ahead uh, what word looks the same upside down and backwards so if you turn it upside down and if you turn it uh, back to front like the mirror image it looks the same whether you turn it upside down or whether you turn it from left to right uh, back to front it it would look the same the answer is swims okay if you turn it upside down uh, and if you look at the mirror image it will look the same isn't it interesting okay now what eight letter word has one letter in it confusing mind-boggling what eight letter word has one letter in it you might be wondering if it is an eight letter word how can it have one letter in it just think and you will find the answer yes it's the other letter remember the pun so we are talking about envelope the word envelope has eight letters in it and when you post a letter you put one letter inside the envelope okay got it very good okay what word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it this should be easier because uh, you did the first one so this shouldn't be difficult what word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it normally when you add two letters to something the word becomes longer but what word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it yes you are right the word short when you add two letters er to it it becomes shorter what is the only word in english language that ends in mt it is dreamt uh, although the Americans would like to call it as dreamed uh, but the irregular form of dream in English British English is dreamt okay how do you spell hard water with only three letters now again you see you are asked to spell a phrase uh, with only three letters but this phrase has got uh, nine letters in it so here is the answer ice ice means hard water okay what is in seasons seconds centuries and minutes but not in decades years and days it's the letter n you have n in seasons you have n in seconds n in centuries and n in minutes but you don't have the letter N in decades, years, or days. Didn't know it before? Okay. Now I think you can take these riddles to your own classes, especially if you are a language teacher, and you would find that your class would become really very interesting. Okay, what English word has three consecutive double letters? Can you think of um, an English word that has three consecutive double letters in it here is the answer bookkeeper bookkeeper so it has B double O double K double E P E R so three consecutive double letters double O double K double P sorry double E all right so uh, through these word uh, riddles you learnt some new words I'm sure okay here are a few more riddles and this time the riddle is identification riddle and it asks us about its identity uh, and this uh, these kind of riddles are good for teaching vocabulary for teaching concepts I get wet when drying I get dirty when wiping what am I normally when you dry something 
it becomes clean and when you wipe something it becomes clean but uh, this thing says I get wet when drying I get dirty when wiping what am I yeah you are right it's a towel uh, when drying it gets wet and when wiping it gets dirty okay here's another object that says I can be cracked made told and played what am I I am a joke okay in English you can crack a joke you can make a joke you can tell a joke you can play joke so these are the idioms uh, English idioms that you can use with joke okay I shrink smaller every time I take a bath what am I I shrink smaller means I get smaller in size every time I get a bath. So what am I? Yes, you are right, a soap. Because uh, soap gets smaller every time you use it. Okay, I'm always around you but often forgotten. I'm pure and clean most time but occasionally rotten. What am I? You're right, air. Okay, I will disappear every time you say my name. What am I? Oh, this is really mysterious thing. When you say its name, it disappears. What is it? It's silence. So you break the silence when you utter its name. I run around, uh, I run around the house but don't move. What am I? So this is something that runs around the house but doesn't move. So can you run around a house without moving? Yes, you can if you are a fence. Okay. I start with T, end with T, and within me is T. What am I? So this is something that starts with T, ends with T, and it contains T. I've given you an easier uh, hint yeah I am a teapot a teapot starts with the letter T it ends with the letter T and of course it carries T it has uh, a drink T in it okay I go up when the rain comes down what am I you're right it's an umbrella okay now uh, these are some riddles. We move on and uh, we uh, go to some jokes. Okay, and again, you know, uh, while understanding these jokes, you will be learning English, and uh, you will be learning a lot of precious things about English. And uh, you can actually use these jokes and such other jokes in your own classes as well. Okay, so the first joke is. Why do cows have bells? Because their horns don't work. And what are the horns? Cows have horns on their heads. But we also have another horns in our uh, vehicles, in the cars. When we blow them, they work. They produce sound. Uh, the cows also have horns, but they can't blow them. Um, in fact, in, in the past, uh, the horns that they used to blow in, they were actually horns of some animals. Uh, so the funny thing is that uh, the, uh, why do the cows wear bells? The funny side is because their horns don't work. They can't blow their horns, they can't produce sound with their horns. Now I'm not, not going to explain the jokes in such details because uh, you see it will mar all uh, fun in it. Normally uh, it is unwise to explain a joke but in English classes uh, sometimes if you think that your students haven't understood the joke properly and they can't enjoy it you can explain it and that will uh, improve their uh, listening skills and they would uh, understand it better next time. 
Why shouldn't you put the letter M into the refrigerator? Because it turns ice into mice. Okay? Uh, Self-explanatory. We move on. What's the definition of a pessimist? A pessimist is a well-informed optimist. Maybe it's not funny for you because in order to understand it, you will have to... Uh, you will have to know what an optimist is and who is a pessimist. A pessimist is someone who always looks at the dark side of the picture. A pessimist is someone who always looks at the dark side of the reality. Whereas an optimist is someone who always looks at the bright side of reality. Okay? Uh, now, this is funny because uh, it is interesting. Some people say a pessimist is a well-informed optimist. Uh, in other words, we say uh, if you are well-informed about things, if you have information about things, then you will only be a pessimist. Then you can't be an optimist. An optimist is only someone who is ignorant, who doesn't know something. Uh, well, you don't have to agree with it, but it is interesting to twist the meaning of pessimist around. Why was the crab sent to prison? Because he kept pinching things. You know a crab? Right? It is a sea animal. It has got two claws in front of its head. And uh, with these claws, it pinches or it holds things. Uh, another meaning of pinch is to steal and we send people to jails uh, for stealing. Uh, so in this joke you have a pun because the word pinch has two meanings. One meaning of pinch is uh, as, as you pinch like this. Uh, another meaning of pinch is to uh, steal something from someone's pocket. Okay, why are Saturday and Sunday strong days? Because they are not weekdays. And again, you know, uh, we have uh, a pun on the word week. Um, W-E-A-K, week, is the opposite of strong. But weekdays are Saturday and Sundays. Okay, so these are some jokes. Uh, let's continue and find more. Okay, here is another joke that I often use in my class and this one is really interesting in order to teach uh, indefinite pronouns. Pronouns that do not refer to a definite person. Um, maybe you also find it interesting and you would like to use it in your own classes. So this is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody and nobody. There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did, did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Okay, so maybe you don't find it funny, but it is really mind-boggling. It is really confusing. And uh, once, if you can get your brain work around it, you will really understand uh, how complex this somebody, everybody, nobody, uh, is in English. Okay. Uh, here's another joke. Capitalism or communism? What's the difference between capitalism and communism? Under capitalism, man exploits man. Under communism, it is exactly the opposite. Okay. So what's the opposite? Man exploits man, it doesn't really... So in other words, uh, uh, there is no real difference between capitalism and communism. Um, in both systems, man exploits man. Maybe, uh, once again, you agree with it or not, 
uh, but it's just a way, funny way of looking at these two terms. Okay, uh, now this is really interesting. One day a teacher was attempting to teach the names of animals to a class of five-year-olds. She held up a picture of a deer and asked one boy, Billy, what is this animal? Little Billy looked at the picture with a disheartened look on his face and responded, I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith, I don't know. The teacher was not one to give up easily, so she then asked Billy, Well, Billy, what does your mommy call your daddy? Little Billy's face suddenly brightened up, but then a confused look came over his face as he asked, Mrs. Smith, is that really a pig? Okay, all right. So, uh, you know the difference between a deer and a pig. Uh, but you know, through these jokes, uh, there are very subtle areas of language that can be taught. And one reason why I chose jokes and riddles in particular uh, for this functional English is because it's not merely laughing it away. It's not merely for bringing smiles on your faces. Uh, actually, we can learn the subtle shades of meanings, the idiomatic use of language and puns. And sometimes we, we can also uh, have a better look at a culture. Uh, in fact, as I was talking earlier, that understanding humor is difficult in other languages, not because uh, of uh, the language itself, but also because uh, language is product of culture and so is humor. What is funny in one culture might not be funny in another culture. So every culture has different things to laugh about, different things to uh, smile about. So uh, it is easy to appreciate jokes in another language if we understand the culture of that particular language. Language, as I said earlier, is the product of culture. And uh, there are lots of things that would only make sense to us if we uh, keep our eyes and ears open and we study the culture which produced that language. Uh, so if you want to be a good teacher and even if you want to be a good learner, in future I would, uh, I would like you to watch comedies. One big uh, good comedy that I would suggest, the British comedy that I would suggest is good for learning English, is Mind Your Language. Ever heard about it? It's a British comedy, it is a TV serial and it used to be uh, played on PTV as well, I remember. Um, and it will bring lots of lofters. It's uh, about an English class in which uh, there is one English teacher, Mr. Brown, and he tries to teach English to uh, people who are from various nationalities. So in that class you have a French girl, you have an Italian, you have a Spanish, you have an Indian, you have a Pakistani, you have Japanese, um, a Chinese, and all of them uh, with their different linguistic backgrounds and with their different cultural backgrounds. Uh, are struggling to learn English language and uh, that's what makes it interesting. There are various episodes and uh, if you have access to the internet you can download some episodes uh, and I, I would like you to watch it because it would not only entertain you but uh, this series would also make you uh, learn lots of uh, phrases in English. Actually I have shown some clips of this uh, mind your language in my classes and very often I use it in my functional English classes when I am not uh, recording my lectures through uh, a camera instead I am talking to them directly and after showing it to them I ask them lots of questions uh, and I have always found it a fun way. Okay, uh, now we've learnt that uh, 
jokes and riddles are a good way of uh, for learning puns. Uh, the words that have dual meanings and both the meanings are valid in a context. One of them is usually funny. Uh, similarly, it's uh, great for teaching idioms. Uh, now we look at two jokes here and these jokes contain idioms in it. And in fact, uh, you can think of, uh, you can make your own jokes uh, with English idioms in it. Okay. All right. Now, why did the boy throw, uh, why did the boy throw the clock out the window? That's the question. The answer is to see if time really flies. Okay. We, in English, we use the idiom, the time flies, time flies. Time flies means that time um, goes away quickly. Okay. What did the horses say to each other before they went to sleep? I guess it's time to hit the hay. This is an American idiom. To hit the hay means to go to bed. Uh, I think this dates back to the time when they used to have mattresses that were made of hay. Uh, but it is interesting in this joke because uh, hay is dry grass and hay is a fodder for horses, uh, food for horses. So uh, the question is what did the horses say to each other before they want, uh, went to sleep? I guess it's time to hit the hay uh, and uh, this has dual meanings here and one of the meanings is the literal meaning another meaning is the idiomatic meaning so you would see that in these two jokes uh, you have two idioms in English and you can use these idioms either literally or you uh, according to their dictionary meaning or you can use them idiomatically and uh, you can think of some idioms in English and if you are an English teacher, next time you can make a joke by using that idiom uh, both uh, as, uh, as an idiom and also you can use it for its dictionary meaning. Okay, so um, we've got uh, idioms, we've got puns that we can teach through jokes and riddles. Uh, now, before we move on, uh, can you summarize, can you tell me what kind of things, grammar points, uh, can we teach through jokes and riddles? You are right. We can teach puns, we can teach idioms, we can teach spellings, we can teach vocabulary. Uh, in fact, there are lots of subtle aspects of language that usually go unconscious and uh, we can't directly teach it in the class, but they are part of our language understanding and they must somehow be incorporated in our language classes. Uh, the best way to do that is uh, putting it in the right context in jokes and riddles. Otherwise, what happens is that we uh, teach grammar we have exercises, we have serious discussions in the class, uh, but when, uh, when you actually find out something funny, you, you can't appreciate it, you feel discouraged because you sometimes you feel that, uh, you feel frustrated that probably you are never going to learn the language uh, because uh, if you can't appreciate a humor in a language, uh, you can't really say that you have learnt that language. Okay, it's a tough task, it is challenging, but at the same time it is interesting. And uh, uh, so this is a fun way of learning language. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, that with these skills you will, uh, you would like to uh, apply these skills in your own classes and you will next time don't uh, think that jokes are only for wasting times and you would understand their instructional values, their teaching values. Okay, now uh, we move on and I want to give you a practice situation. Okay. Okay, so here is your first practice situation. 
share some jokes in English. I haven't given you a complete situation here, uh, but sometimes you should share jokes in English with your colleagues, with your students even. Uh, I often ask my students to think of a joke. In fact, I give them a theme. So you have jokes related to food. You have jokes rela related to weather. You have jokes related to language. You have jokes that have idioms in it. You have jokes that have puns in it. Uh, you have jokes that have animals in it. And you have jokes about the parts of body. You have riddles. Similarly, you have riddles that involve persons. You have riddles that involve things. Uh, so what you can do is you can think of one particular theme and uh, then uh, look for, search for jokes that are related to that theme and uh, then you can uh, share those jokes with your colleagues. So it would be quite a task. You can research for jokes regarding a particular theme and then you can uh, ask your partner to s research about the same theme and then you can exchange, then you can share if you have got the same jokes or if you have got different jokes. Okay, um, the second task, uh, normally in most of the cases, it's not good to explain a joke because a joke is to be appreciated. It is for entertainment. It is not for instruction. It's not for explanation. But when you are learning a language, sometimes you have to explain uh, why a joke is funny. What makes it funny? In fact, I have done it in today's lecture. So uh, you should have, uh, probably by now you must have got an idea how to do that. You can explain the devices that have been used. You can explain the subtle points of grammar, subtle points of vocabulary, idioms, puns, and other subtle parts of, uh, uh, of language use that make it funny. And you can also explain the difference in culture, why something is funny in one culture and it's uh, not funny at all in another culture. Or, uh, so in this way, uh, you can make your students practice in English. You can also practice it with your colleagues. And uh, I'm sure that uh, you won't ignore this practice situation and you would make full uh, benefit out of it and you would in this way you can add to the collection of jokes that you have got and in particular if you search for language jokes on the net you, fil you will find lots of jokes uh, that are related to teaching and learning language and uh, if you start sharing them you will learn lots of grammar aspects vocabulary aspects and uh, uh, underlying aspects that are not very direct, that are not um, usually taught in the classes. And this is how you will uh, practice. And as I told you earlier, you should also watch humorous programs in English. You should listen to English programs in English. Um, uh, they will really help you improve your English. Even if you don't understand them, ev understand everything, uh, you can understand 20%, 30%, but if you will keep on listening to the humorous texts, uh, you will become proficient in it. Because what happens is, I know uh, there are so many of my students who can understand news very well. They can understand cricket commentary very well. Uh, they can understand business news very well. and. Uh, some of them can even understand when there are formal interviews on television and there are some documentaries regarding some particular subjects. Uh, but most of them say that they can't understand why people are laughing, why something is so funny. Uh, when they watch movies, they miss the points why something is funny. Um, I can't really overemphasize this aspect of language. Um, regardless of which language you are learning, it is important that you, uh, you be entertained in that language 
and you can understand the funny side of the language. Okay, now um, the third practice situation is uh, you study these pictures and I will also provide this practice situation uh, through handout. I would like you to download a handout, uh, this handout and then you can look at these pictures. These pictures are numbered. You can study them and then you can describe this picture in detail and you can explain what's so funny about it. Um, or maybe you can find some other pictures that are funnier than this. Maybe this picture is not as funny as I wanted it to be. Uh, but you can uh, think of, uh, you can search for some such pictures and then you can try to explain it in your own words. Uh, uh, so the purpose is that you can explain uh, something using natural funny English. Okay, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, this uh, lecture. Oh, you are, you are back again. Here you are again. Yes, I thought I should also tell you some jokes. Oh, really? Have you got some jokes? Yes, I've got some. In fact, I've got many. Oh, oh, please, please don't tell us so many jokes because uh, we don't have enough time left. Uh, we are just winding up our today's lecture. Okay, maybe next time then. All right, all right, good. Uh, maybe in future. Uh, we would love to listen to your jokes and you are welcome to our program. Anytime you like, you can come. Thank you very much. Oh, you are welcome. Uh, uh, how about your English? You, you said you are an American, so uh, it, it, must be, uh, it must be pretty easy for you to appreciate jokes. Yes, it is. Okay, very well. Um, and how about your English? I'm good at it. Okay, good. Uh, now I'm going to ask you a question. As an English teacher, can you uh, speak a sentence in English that has the following words in it? Defeat, deduct, defense, and detail. I repeat. Can you use a sentence in English that has the words defeat, deduct, defense and detail in it. Sure, it is easy. The feet of the duck went over the fence before the tail. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, uh, what, what did you say? Say that again. I said the feet of the duck went over the fence before the tail. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You are pronouncing the as the? Yes, yes. Okay, that, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our show. Uh, we don't have enough time left, so uh, if you allow us, I want to wrap up today's lecture. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's look at the summary of today's lecture. In lecture number 18, we learned how to comprehend riddles. Riddles are like uh, brain teasers and uh, it's important to understand such riddles in a foreign language because they uh, uh, they help increase our proficiency in that foreign language. Uh, today we also read some funny texts. We met uh, a character whose name is funny and uh, although she was not really very funny but she was trying to be funny. We also read some jokes and uh, we learned how to appreciate these jokes and we tried to understand why something becomes funny and what are the subtle points of language that we can learn through jokes. 
we also learned uh, how to use puns and idioms and uh, I, I wish that in future you will be able to appreciate puns and idioms and you will be able to read English texts which are funny and you will be able to solve certain riddles and you will be able to create some riddles as well uh, well with this we come to the end of lecture number 18 I hope you really enjoyed today's lesson if you didn't learn anything uh, you must have enjoyed quite a lot but I'm sure that along with uh, entertainment you also learned something thank you very much